Hello everybody. This is the third annual Family Day Health Fair for the Sahara Lawson Foundation and the District Youth Caucus. At Lions Creek Way in Oakland. We had a pep rally and I had a red shirt or something. What do you want to Hey, sweetie pie! Hey, you! Hey, you. Hey, you. Hey, you. Hey, you. I was gonna call you yesterday. They tried it's to a hard loss. It's a hard loss. The youth will. You got some youth here? My name is Janice Hart, and I'm here representing the Soldier Network, which is affiliated with sickle cell anemia. And um, we're trying to get the word out through the black community. And this is the lead person right here, Ms. Helen Mitchell. And the, um, the Sickle Cell Soldier Network organization is based out of Atlanta, Georgia. The founder is Phyllis Zachary Thomas, and she is a sickle cell patient herself. She's the author of this book. It is called Sickle Cell Disease 100 Years Later. And all the stories that's in this book is from sickle cell patients telling their struggles, um, what they go through of having the sickle cell disease. As we know, the sickle cell disease is a very neglected disease. So we are here to bring awareness out to the sickle cell community and the black community and hoping that we will get more attention just like AIDS, cancer, leukemia, and the other disease. Um, and we thank Marilyn Lawson for inviting us and letting us be here to represent the Soldier Network. Thank you. iPhone sold out. Oh, iPhone sold out. Oh my God. Uh, everything, even those turtlenecks sold out that he wore. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Everything sold out. Okay. I'm Beth Bergman with the Mental Health Association of Alameda County. We provide uh, family uh, support, information referral, family education to families in Alameda County about mental illness and mental health recovery. Please uh, call us and we'd be happy to help you. 835-5410. Thank you. But be transformed by the wow. renewing of your wow. mind. Wow. It's real. Wow. Come on now. Wow. <laughs> I love it to hear a person say I was. Okay. That was the greatest thing you could have been. So, my name is Jesse Brooks. And I, I, I'm from the, well I'm here for Mom's Pharmacy, which is an HIV and AIDS specialist pharmacy. I'm also, I'm a journalist and a photographer for the Post News Group. I write about HIV and AIDS in the African American community each week for the last two years. Nobody does that. Um, the reason why I do it, because people aren't aware of the state of emergency that African Americans, black people here in the United States, black people globally are in. We're talking about, we got two choices. We're talking about we can either start and going towards health and get healthy, or we can be on the wall in the museum talking about, remember, black people used to walk the planet, it's that bad. We're talking about 13 percent of the population nationally, 13 percent of the population locally, African Americans, but each year, half of the HIV and AIDS transmission. HIV and AIDS is a chronic disease, they're saying now, but it still is not a pigment. We're talking about medication every day. We're talking about health issues, seeing your doctor more than you want to know. So if you can prevent from getting HIV, then do your best to abstain from sex. If you have to have sex, stay protected. Talk about sex. Talk about issues that come up. There's a lot of factors, substance abuse, mental health. But if you are HIV positive, people are not dying like they used to. You go to the doctor. Face it, get a test, find out. The earlier you get into treatment, the better off they find that people have a successful um, life. 
So I'm here to talk about HIV and AIDS. I'm here to demonstrate I'm a person. I, I have HIV and AIDS since 1993, living well with it. Also, the other thing is to stand up and not be ashamed. The stigma is killing people from going to get treatment. Don't be scared. Go get treatment. It's like any other disease. It's not shameful. And we can turn it around one person at a time. Thank you. <laughs> Talking in the community, uh, I work for Miles Farmers. Well, you know, stay in touch, you know, and uh, I would definitely like to um, know more about, you know, your business, what the business is about and everything. And um, uh, we're having a, a program on November 12th. Hi, I'm Lumpy Aziz, and I work in the health specialist.org, and I'm here today at this wonderful health fair here at East Dublin. And what I do, I specialize in men over 50. I do prostate cancer prevention, colon health, um, in re reproductive health. I just had a soul have these different books here. Men need to know that we need you here longer and stronger so we can enjoy you more. That's menshealthspecialist.org, and we're offering awesome massages today. Thank you. Is that good? Is cucumbers? It's good. Hi, this is the Alameda County Nutrition Services table. Um, today we're talking to folks about rethinking your drink. Um, we have an education board here that's uh, showing how much sugar there is in different drinks. And we're also doing taste tests of fresh apples and figs, as well as a water that has cucumbers, mint, and sliced oranges in it. That's one way that you can make water really fun and exciting and interesting and really refreshing is you can just cut up some fresh fruit and put it in your water and it has just a little bit of taste. What do you girls think of the water today? Good. It was good? All right. Thank you. Yeah, how you doing? I'm Lawrence Williams, founder and co-founder here of Team Tendaji, representing the Health Care uh, Fair of Oakland, California, and talking about sickle cell anemia. Most people are not known about sickle cell anemia, so I'm here to advocate those and others about sickle cell. This community that we are struggling with sickle cell, and most doctors need to know and show concerns about sickle cell anemia because we have a lot of people that's dying about the illness. People, the doctors and nurses, they don't have any information about it. So we're here to speak to schools, doctors, have assemblies, fairs, health fair, any type of way that we can advocate the community so people can know about sickle cell anemia disease that black folks, black African Americans have. We're here to, to tell others about that. Thank you. Team Chandaji. Wait, we like this. You have to get <laughs> you enjoying yourself today? The sun in her eyes. <laughs> you just here having fun, huh? With cameo. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>
she was coming and he made a left. He was running top speed till he was out of breath. Knocked an old man down and swore he killed him. The dope fiend brought back a spanking shotgun. He went outside, but there was cops all over. Then he dipped into a car, a stolen Nova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, I have a card. Okay. Like uh, schools will have us come out, set up exhibits, VA hospitals, libraries, lots of churches. Since they're not teaching it, but uh. Just want to say, God is good, it's a blessing. We have the Cal Pep truck over here. If anyone wants to go get tested, we have the Cal Pep truck. We also have the Oakland Fire Department, which we want to thank them. We also have some vendors at Walgreens. We have more public ready over here. We want to say thank you to them. But please go around to each booth. We're all doing the same thing. We're networking. So thank you guys for coming out and enjoy yourselves. And please pay a visit over to the Cow Pep Trucks and all the booths and vendors and support your neighborhood and community. Thank you. Hey ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? This is your boy, one and only Simply Dre. We just basically, what we doing, you know, I'm with that turf ministry and what we do, we take the gospel to the streets. You know, I'm living proof that God can take a mess and create a message. I'm living proof that God can take a fool and make a tool. I'm here at the annual family, uh, uh, it's a health fair day. And we having a good time in Jesus' name. This is my setup here, you know, and when you get a Simply Dre CD, half of these proceeds go to Children's Hospital, Oakland, California, also Atlanta, Georgia. So, you know, I mean, we gotta spread the love and spread the wealth. So I just want to let y'all know we having a good time out here. It's going down in Oak Town. It's all the way live and we're out. God bless you. Peace. Y'all can wave when y'all y'all want to. My name is Francel Haskins. I work for Alameda County Public Health Department. I manage the injury prevention program. Our display today is on bicycle safety, helmet safety, and car seat safety. We have materials for families so that they know how, what car seat they need for their children as well as information on the proper fit of helmets. We're hoping for a good crowd to come out and take our materials and learn about helmet safety as well as car seat safety. Thank you. You can hear Robert? All right, good. 
why don't we all come now, those that are participating and those, we, let, let's come to the seating area. Thanks for coming out. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce you to someone that works in our community and she does a great job in our community. She works with youth at a safe place. She has 27 years of working with youth with domestic violence. And I'd like to introduce Ms. Carolyn Russell. She's Ms. Lawson for having me come out today. Um, as she said, my name is Carolyn Russell. I've been the executive director of A Safe Place, a domestic violence program in the city of Oakland for 27 years. The organization has been in existence for nearly 34 years. Uh, we started out as just a shelter program, you know, 34 years ago providing crisis counseling and support services to victims of domestic violence. And as you all know, historically our program has served women, battered women and their children. So over the past 33 years, we recognize that most women do not go to shelters. So we started developing partnerships in the community. We started the first domestic violence unit in the Oakland Police Department. We assisted Alameda County Social Services in developing their first domestic violence unit, recognizing that CalWORKs clients did not always complete their activities, and sometimes it was just due to the fact they were involved. Okay, so one of the other programs that we focused on over the past, you know, 20 years has been our teen dating violence prevention program. And as you know, we started out in this battered women's movement serving battered women, not recognizing that women bring their children with them and also not recognizing that there are also men who have also experienced domestic violence. So for the past 30 some years, we've expanded our program services. In terms of our services around sheltering and community mental health services, counseling, support groups, all of those services are now available for men. And I wanted to say that although I'm here to speak for the most part about our teen dating violence prevention program, I think it's also important to say this because historically a safe place has been known as a battered woman shelter. We're no longer a battered woman shelter. We're now a shelter for victims of domestic violence, which means that we are now serving men. We're providing emergency residential services for men and their children. We have been serving men who have come to us with their children, single men. We also provide community counseling and support groups for men. So this is very important because I think historically we have looked at domestic violence as a woman's issue. Yeah. And many times men and young men, whether they be our brothers, our uncles, our cousins, or what have you, haven't had a knowledge of what their role could really be in this work. But we're into family. We're about supporting the family. We know that there are times when law enforcement must play a role in domestic violence. That does occur. We also recognize that the criminal justice system sometimes does play a role in domestic violence. But we're working with those communities as well because we recognize that if we continue to serve one person without serving the other partner in the relationship, that we will never get to healing the family. So we want to say that we are also a program that recognizes that male victims are also needing to be served. In addition to that, 
I would like to just say that our teen dating violence prevention program is one of our most innovative programs. And it's the most innovative program because we have found that prevention is key to decreasing domestic violence. We have found that we have many young women and young men who are in abusive relationships. We also recognize that young women are just as aggressive sometimes as young men. So we want to recognize the fact that we're not serving one gender over another. We want to educate young people about intimate partner abuse. We want to educate young men because we want to partner with the criminal justice system and decrease the number of young black men being arrested for domestic violence. So yes, it's a partnership, but the partnership with the criminal justice system is to decrease the number of arrests. The partnership with law enforcement is to decrease the number of arrests, not only of men, because we have seen a high increase in the number of women who are being arrested for domestic violence. The laws have changed. There is a mandatory arrest, so therefore someone will be incarcerated most often if the police responds. Now in terms of our teen dating violence prevention program, that's extremely important because we are serving those youth at a time where they have a space in their life to make a change. So we go into the schools, we go to organizations that serve teens. Last year we developed and uh, produced a DVD on teen dating violence. We also held a teen dating violence prevention conference last February, which is Teen Dating Violence Prevention Month. What is important for us is to have teens involved in the work that we're doing. We choose to have a conference and we choose to have it at a time where teens can be involved. We tend to have these conferences and other activities when teens are not available to participate. So all of our activities are inclusive of teens. We also pay teens, we give them incentives to participate. So if you know of any teens who would like to get involved and become peer educators and become advocates at their high schools, they can be trained. We're offering training, peer education training, to any teen who is interested in becoming an advocate and becoming an educator. So I wanted to just say this briefly because it's very important that you recognize our teen dating violence prevention program. So our emergency shelter program, counseling, teen dating violence, community services, all of these programs are here and they're free. So before I stop, I would just like to say the, a little bit about the prevalence of domestic violence. Every nine seconds in the United States, a woman or a man is being beaten or assaulted by an intimate partner. Around the world, at least one in every three women have been beaten, coerced into sex, otherwise abused during their lifetime. So when we talk about domestic violence and victims, we're talking about our sisters, our aunts, our cousins, our nieces, our nephews, our grandparents, we're talking about our family. So this is not a woman's issue. This is not a man's issue. And a safe place does not own the issue of domestic violence. The community does. So if you're interested in preventing intimate partner abuse, whether it's with teens, whether it's with adults, you can call us and get involved. We're here today. I am here to represent a safe place, but also to give you information and to let you know that we're here to support any of you who have teens who may be involved in abusive relationships. One of the questions that I've been asked most often is, how do I help a young woman who is in an abusive relationship? Or how do I help a young man 
who is in an abusive relationship. My answer most often is get them involved. Get them involved in the work. Most often when teens can get involved in the work, they educate themselves and they learn. They learn by the work. And the best part about it is they get paid. So I want to thank you and I want to thank Ms. Lawson for giving me an opportunity to speak to you today and to let you know that I will be available if you're interested in volunteering, if you're interested in getting information, or any other information that you might need about a safe place or about domestic violence. So thank you again and thank you for your time and giving me your attention. Testing, testing. We all need each other's support, and again, why don't we give her another hand clap? Yeah. All right. All right, why don't we, uh, we're gonna do something different. Now we're gonna go into our prayer, yeah. amen, because without the Lord, we can do nothing. Oh, amen, we can do nothing without him. Um, so all those that are uh, willing and able to pray, we're gonna lift up the Lord in prayer. First of all, how many are happy to be here to support this special event today? Amen, we got all of our providers that are out here t today. That's a wonderful thing, amen. We definitely need you in our community for to make a change. Am I right about it? Yeah, right, I'm right about it, amen. They said to take a village to raise a child, right? Community, come on, we need to outreach together. Brian, come on while we pray, amen, hallelujah. Let, let us bow our heads in prayer. You want to grab somebody's hand that's next to you or whoever. Um, make a friend, be a friend. Amen. It's, it's not about you. It's about this event. Amen. Father God, we reach out to you now in prayer. We thank you for all the providers that are out here, all the sponsors that are out here for this special occasion. Lord Jesus, you know we need you in every hour and even now, Father. We ask that you will continually to bless this community. Father, help us to support, help us to learn how to outreach, Father, without discriminating. Help us to learn how to love each other, Father. And even now, Father, if all of us come together as one, we can make change and we definitely can make it happen. So, Father, we reach out to you today. Father, you are the answer to the world today. We lift you up right now because you're worthy and you're worthy of praise. And, Lord, we thank you for uh, bringing here today, meeting the needs of the people, Father. We thank you for Mary Lawson Foundation, to Talar Fountain, Talar uh, Lawson Foundation. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for the celebration today, Father, as we're reaching together, pulling together, knitting together as a community. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for those that are coming and those that are on their way, Father. Give them traveling grace. Father, as you meet their needs and as you meet the needs of the speakers that are coming forth, Father, help them bless them, Father, to give an encouraging word for the people. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us give God a hand clap. Come on, somebody. Let us give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. Now we're going to have uh, um, uh, Marilyn Lawson. She's going to come now and introduce the next person that would be coming up to speak. I'm also going to bring, be bringing up the white elders. He's going to come and help me with this. At this time, we're going to be honoring some public service in our community. And we'd like to first start with Miss Margaret Dixon. Ms. Dixon has served this community for over 30 years. She's worked with PAL. She's the president of PAL. She's also a teacher at Merritt College. She teaches criminal justice. And she's worked with this community for 30 years working with youth and changing things for the youth in this community. She has given so many youth opportunities in this community. She's a true public servant. And I'd like someone, someone is here to talk about Ms. Dixon, who knows firsthand what she does for youth. How y'all doing today? All right. Um, first, um, everything that she said, um, that was good and that was great. But I think Miss Margaret Dixon, she's like that times 50. Like, um, she's done so much. When I was in high school, um, I ran into this, I ran into this lady who, basically, I would say changed my life in a sense because. Um, I didn't have, well, I didn't apply for any schools, anything like that out of high school at Skyline. And she ended up giving me a call like three months later and was like, hey, would you like to go to Clark Atlanta University? And I'm like, I don't even know where that's at, but 
helped me. I want to get out of here. So send me. So she helped me out, man. She did a lot for me. She got me into school and scholarships and different things like that. And she stuck in the process. And I hadn't known her that long, but I would like to say it's kind of like a, a guardian angel. Somebody that basically comes in your life and do something different. And um, for someone who hadn't ever been out of Oakland ever in his life, like not one time, um, I've been almost to every state in America and I've been traveling everywhere. But it took that one time for me to get out of this state in order for me to understand that. And I had to go somewhere else. And I had to go off. I graduated with a 3.17 GPA. Um, but that one thing, it changed my life. And she's still doing the same thing years later. And I've been out of college since 2006. And ever since then, I come back and I go speak at her classes at Merritt. And I come and speak whenever she asks me to come say something. It's just like, cool. I was supposed to be at work today. I told him, no, I need to go speak and say something for her today for everybody else to understand what this wonderful, beautiful woman has done.